Climate change is an element of global change. It is even one of the most important challenges for life on Earth. Scientists, specialists in climate change, have evidenced climate change since the pre-industrial era and also evidenced the fact that climate change is connected to human activity which produces vast amounts of greenhouse gases. So the question is, how can animals and plants adapt to global warming? A number of uh, studies have shown that they either migrate to cooler climes or change their behavior, or even uh, become extinct, unfortunately. The question is, how can human beings adapt to climate change? We consider that it is a specific human condition that has allowed us to adapt to all sorts of climates. But however, the current acceleration of climate change, modifications in the climate, are too fast. The Earth is also overpopulated. So as a matter of fact, we have formulated the hypothesis that human condition is uh, currently threatened in its adaptation to change and in understanding the change and finding solutions. So we may be uh, faced with a form of cognitive vulnerability. This vulnerability, however, may depend on a whole set of elements around an individual, which are going to have an influence on their cognition, notably the environment. If you live in a high-risk environment, things are very different from when you live in a more protected environment. Culture also, elements of the culture, signs, symbols and tools that are available uh, for an individual models of behavior and the cognitive style in a given culture. These elements are going to have an influence on the manner in which individuals comprehend the phenomenon of climate change. In order to study the cognitive adaptation, we have chosen to focus our research, our team's research, in various places of the world with very different climate environments, with a field investigation methodology based on interviews, on the circulation of questionnaires, experiments, discussions or focus groups. And our research has confirmed what had already been partly stated in literature, that in major cities, human cognition is limited in the understanding of climate change, which is a part of global change. So on the one hand, we were able to evidence the limitations of uh, human sensory mechanisms in the perception of uh, climate change, the difference between cause and effect, the systematic underestimation of the relative frequency of rare events. Very often people consider, uh, for instance, that flooding will not happen next year even if we now know that in some regions uh, flooding uh, happens all the time. Also the spatial, uh, temporal and social distance between the players and the victims. What we do in Paris, does that have an effect on the life of people on small islands? And conversely, can our behaviors transform life or threaten life and the existence of future generations. Another important element in uh, evaluating the cognitive understanding of the phenomena is the evaluation of costs and effects. Can what I do have a true effect 
on uh, this very complex phenomenon. To give you an example of how we can use our interconnected model in the face of one of the issues of climate change, I shall now show you a few elements of our research about the cognitive evaluation of risk. We conducted research in Paris, which is considered a safe space, a protected space that is uh, not very vulnerable to climate change, and noted that the population has a very simple, linear, reversible perception of the risk. If one eliminates the causes, climate change will simply go away. And then in the Alps, where we conducted research in the Chamonix Valley for over a period of three years, the population has a multiple evaluation of risk. They have an iterative vision. They try to review their exposure to risk based on the events, and they do so constantly. They also have the ability to see the interaction between the various elements involved in climate change. And of course, they will try to devise adaptation techniques based on various indicators. And finally, a few results of our research in New Caledonia and French Guyana, where climate risk is much more visible, and where we were able to identify, especially with the uh, Melanesian population in New Caledonia and Amerindian population in French Guyana, they have a systemic vision of climate change, which takes into consideration various subsystems, biosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere and toposphere and cryosphere, and which allow them to connect the dimensions of space and time in climate change and to plan to forecast the consequences of these risks. In conclusion, I think one can say that the research we conducted in various locations across the globe show that the population of major cities, and this confirms uh, the general literature, are the most cognitively vulnerable because they have an analytical chain of thought. They isolate the various phenomena. They cannot envision the interactions, and that makes the comprehension of these complex phenomena are very difficult. So we consider that we need to put more work into complex cognition that also includes emotions and intentions, a more systemic, more holistic approach and fostering simultaneous mental processes to process information. And finally, let me present a small, or perhaps a large project, or at least I hope so, which will allow cognitive remediation in urban environments to improve cognitive adaptation through tools that have an environmental validity in people's everyday lives, young people or, or even children. We need to develop educational games, serious games, expographic tools and MOOCs, which can also play a part in improving the capacity of understanding of these complex phenomena and to take action based on this understanding.